Flora, why are you just sitting lazily and watching TV like this? Such a couch potato. Anyway, I've got really good news. James has been promoted to marketing manager. And guess what? He's going to be earning much more money for us now. So you'd better know your place instead of being such a lazy daughter. He's been promoted. That's great. He has been working very hard, so it's worth his effort. I hope he can make the most of what he has gained and become a successful manager. I'm happy for him. Really? You're truly happy for your elder brother's success. I thought that you were just a useless sister who is always jealous of your brother's achievements. What are you talking about? I'm your daughter. I'm not that bad. Anyway, you don't need to say for yourself. I know all your lies. If I knew that you would become this useless, I would have spent no money for you to learn at school. I mean, what was I looking forward to at that time? Vocational school? What a stupid idea. That's why you haven't had any job to do until now. So you should be thankful that I saved you 29 years of your life. What on earth are you thinking? Are you being serious? Listen, mom, it's not that I'm not doing any job. I'm working at home. Haven't you heard of the word freelancer? And I still gave you $300 each month to cover for the cost. You've got to be kidding me. Just how special do you think you are? Even though you only studied at vocational school and worked a useless job, why don't you just acknowledge that you're not as smart or skilled as you like to make yourself out to be? Okay, I admit that you are my mom, but you don't have the right to insult me like that. Don't you know that you've made me feel hurt? When I graduated from vocational school, I tried my best to develop myself and gain money for the family. Unfortunately, COVID-19 broke out, and from then, I lost my job and had to work as a freelancer. You don't even understand how challenging it was for me at that time to earn money so that I wouldn't bother you and my brother. I hardly ever spent money on myself and never complained, even when I couldn't buy the clothes I wanted and couldn't go on holiday with my friends. And all that I receive from my family is complaints and insults because my salary is not as high as James's? Okay, so now you mean that I have to feel grateful for your sacrifice, right? Of course not. It's not like I expect you all to thank and bow down to me, but I definitely didn't expect you all to be this indifferent to the effort that I'm making. Don't you ever feel proud about your own daughter at all? No, I really don't understand what you expect from me. It's only natural that you take care of your family, don't you think? You shouldn't be so selfish. Anyway, I don't understand how you can make such a big deal over such a pathetic amount of money. Whether you put that money into paying the bills or not, it doesn't make any difference. More importantly, you should be grateful I'm still letting you live in this house. You're already a grown adult, so you should be living by yourself or getting married, but you still haven't left. I am grateful, Mom. That's why I've been paying for everything. Another thing, instead of being a freelancer as you say so, why don't you find a better place to work? A place that actually pays you more money. Though, considering how useless you are, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the best you can do. Do you really have to talk to me like that? Like the choice I've made means nothing? I don't regret focusing on my career, and I enjoy my job. Whatever! You're just as stubborn and useless as I've always thought. Hey, sis! Like, seriously? Have you just been holed up in your room all day? Haven't you even bothered to look out the window? Ugh, oh, I can't even catch a moment of peace and quiet here because mom keeps sighing about how you never come out of your room and refuse to eat meals with her. What? Mom only cooks for herself anyway. She gets all mad when I try to use the kitchen, so I'm stuck buying meals from gas stations or cheap takeout joints. So you expect me to bring my store-bought food and eat with her while she enjoys a meal she cooked only for herself? That's just nonsense. I get what you're saying, but I can't enjoy eating with her when she's constantly complaining like that. By the way, are you even here? Texting me from your room instead of talking face to face? Yeah, I am. I'm kind of busy, you know. It's a holiday weekend, and I guess I have to make an appearance once in a while at our own family home. I mean, I can decide on my own whether or not to go there whenever I feel like it. Right now, I'm just chilling at my own place. That's ridiculous! You're literally sending me text messages from the next room. 
I mean, the real problem is, do you even know what the real problem is? I guess I don't. So what exactly is the so-called real problem? Alright, listen up. I graduated from a fancy college and landed a job at a big company. Yeah, I get it. Good for you. And guess what? I quickly became the top performer in my department. Everyone depends on me and my boss likes me. So what? And now do you see? You're the problem. Your education ended at vocational school. But that doesn't matter. I learned the skills I need to pursue the career I wanted. No, no, the problem is much bigger than that. Problem? What problem? The problem, my dear sister, is that you're just loafing around. Don't keep depending on me and mom forever. Get dressed, go outside, and get a job. Kids who grow up and still stay at home with their parents eventually get kicked out. Even vocational graduates can contribute something to society, you know. If you don't get a job, you won't amount to anything in the real world. What are you talking about? You've got it all wrong. I've already explained this to you. I don't work for a company, but I do have a job. I work from home. Oh, yes. You like to call it freelancing, right? If you actually knew what freelancing was, why do you keep telling me to get a job? Life in this world is never easy, you know. What are you going on about now? Well, you see, a natural-born genius like me can excel at anything effortlessly. But freelancers like you can only produce average results no matter how hard you try. It's true. Not everyone can be a total success all the time in this world. But I'm fortunate enough to always find work with my skills. That's why I chose vocational school in the first place. Oh, so you went to vocational school to learn how to be a slacker. Do you even have a clue how ridiculous you sound? For someone who claims to be a genius, you're completely missing the point here. You don't even know how hard my work is, but I'm still content with that. Well, if you're so content with your fulfilling career, then you can continue living your life on your own terms. But don't expect us to support you financially or include you in our family activities if you can't at least keep up with me. I don't bother my genius brain with useless information. Please, don't ever associate me with someone like you. So you think it's useless information? And what's so useless about it? And what do you even mean by now? Don't you dare talk to me like that. I'm your older brother. I'm the one bringing in the money for this family. And your role is just to listen and obey. End of story. Flora, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's up? We've moved without you. An impoverished freelancer like you does not deserve to go with us. Are you serious? What's wrong with you? Am I really that insignificant to you? Is money all you care about? There's nothing wrong with me. You simply don't make enough money. If you want to join us, you need to do whatever it takes to increase your income. Maybe then you'll be worthy of our family vacations. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Money isn't the only measure of worthiness, Mom. I may not make as much as James, but I have my own accomplishments and a fulfilling career. I work hard, and I'm proud of what I do. Oh, spare me your self-righteousness. You're just making excuses for your lack of success. If you were truly successful, you'd have more to show for it. Success is not solely defined by material possessions or the amount of money in one's bank account. It's about finding fulfillment and happiness in what you do. I may not have a fancy title or a high-paying corporate job, but I have the freedom to pursue my passions and live life on my own terms. Freedom and passion won't pay the bills, Flora. You need to be practical and think about your future. Don't you want to have financial stability? Of course I do, but financial stability doesn't have to come at the expense of my happiness. I value a balanced life where I can do work that I love and still take care of my responsibilities. I may not have reached the same level of success as James in your eyes, but that doesn't make me any less valuable or worthy of respect. I never asked for your financial support or to be included in your vacations based on how much money I make. I want to be valued for who I am as a person, not for my bank account. If you can't accept that, then maybe it's time we reevaluate our relationship. Fine, have it your way. If that's how you feel, then maybe it's best if we distance ourselves. That's how you can pay me back for raising you up until now. Oh, so now you want me to pay you back? 
How convenient. Well, guess what? I should have moved out ages ago, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just like you wish for. Yeah, sure, whatever. Do whatever you want. I don't care. I still have James, so your absence means nothing to me. Well, congratulations on having James by your side. And I believe you mentioned disowning me? Perfect! I don't want anything to do with you either. I'm finally going to live a life for myself, without you breathing down my neck. From now on, we're strangers. Are you satisfied with that? That suits me just fine. You were never good enough for this family anyway. I'm glad we can finally get rid of the burden that is you. But let me ask, are you really sure about this? Don't come running to me when everything falls apart, just like I warned you before. Honestly, your pride will be your downfall. That's why you'll never surpass your brother. All I'm asking is for you to find a job that pays twice as much as what you're making now, and then maybe I'll consider letting you back in. It's that simple. You should just be a good girl and do as I say. But of course, you never do. You've always been such a troublemaker. Listening to you has wasted 20 years of my life trying to please you. I can't bear to live with you anymore. And this is the perfect opportunity for me to start fresh. I don't even want to think of you as my mother anymore. So if you've moved out, it's absolutely perfect for me. I used to wonder if there was a chance for us to reconcile. But now it's crystal clear that we can't. It's like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. If anything, this situation works in my favor. I don't have to hand over my entire salary to you anymore, and I can find my own place. I can finally do all the things I've wanted to do and spend money on myself. You may think I'll regret it, but guess what? I'm over the moon! What? Are you out of your mind? You'll end up homeless and all alone. How can you possibly be happy about that? What? Homeless? You really have no idea, do you? It's a shame, but it's your own lack of interest in me that led to this. And let me tell you, I couldn't be happier. I'm finally freeing myself from the toxic mother-daughter relationship we've always had. This is the happiest I've ever been. I'll be free. Free from you and your manipulation. I'm going to move to a new place, and you won't even know the address. We're going to live completely separate lives from now on. Goodbye. Flora! Flora! Why in the world won't you answer the phone? I've been calling you relentlessly since yesterday, and it's driving me absolutely insane. Don't you realize how important this call is? Ugh! Pick up the phone right now, young lady! Don't you dare ignore me! I am your mother, and I demand your immediate attention! Oh, mother, mother, mother. It seems you haven't quite grasped the situation here. Let me spell it out for you. You have dialed the wrong number. I don't have a mother. Yes, that's right. I am motherless, and it's quite liberating, I must say. What on earth are you blabbering about, Flora? Don't be ridiculous. I am your mother, and you better start taking me seriously. This is not a joke. I need to talk to you about something incredibly important. So put your attitude aside and listen to me. Well, well, well. Isn't this amusing? I used to have a mother, or at least someone I called my mother. But guess what? We cut ties just last month, and we made a pact never to bother each other again. So, whoever you are, I couldn't care less. I have no interest in conversing with anyone who claims to be my mother. Flora, darling, I vaguely recall some sort of disagreement between us. But you didn't honestly take that seriously, did you? It was all in the past, my dear. Let's sweep it under the rug and make amends. We can't keep dwelling on silly fights. Oh, how precious! You want us to get on from now on, do you? Well, having a mother is a thing of the past for me. Even when I used to call you my mom, you certainly didn't act like one. So, pardon me if I don't jump with joy at the idea of conversing with someone who declared me a burden and claimed to have no use for me. What made you suddenly change your mind, I wonder? It's about our new house, Flora. We might be facing eviction next month if we don't come up with the funds. You've got to help us! James is busy with his own affairs, and I'm left with no other choice. I don't know how this happened, but we're in dire straits. Please, please, I'll give you our address. Hurry, we need you! Oh, you will never be able to come live with us, you say? That's ridiculous. 
What exactly do you expect from me, mother? I fail to see how I can be of any assistance to you. I thought I made it abundantly clear before that we have severed all ties. I've done more than enough for this family, and you conveniently chose to overlook it, showing no gratitude whatsoever. So, I made the decision to start fresh. I'm not the least bit surprised by the predicament you find yourself in now. Let me simplify it for you. James wasn't bringing home any money, so it's only natural that you couldn't afford the rent. It's a simple cause and effect, really. I... I don't understand what you're saying, Flora. Of course you don't, Mother. Allow me to enlighten you. You see, James, dear old brother, had an enormous debt from his failed business. So he came crawling to me, seeking help. And what did I ask for? I requested that he transfer the house's ownership to me, under the condition that he wouldn't disclose it to you. And guess what? He complied, like the obedient child he is. Quite impressive, don't you think? Now, where he is hiding these days, I have no clue. Probably scurrying away like a cowardly rat. But the point is, the situation you're facing now serves as undeniable proof that his meager salary couldn't cover the rent and bills. Do you finally comprehend the value of my pitiful salary? It seems not. This... this is all too much to process. The house was in your name? How was that even possible? Why would James do such a thing? Ah, the pieces are slowly falling into place in that befuddled mind of yours. Yes, mother, the house was indeed in my name. It's not possible? Well, it happened. You're telling me to wait and process this? I suggest you brace yourself, because you're in for a shock. Oh, James, James. Always chasing after more money. It seems like he'll never be satisfied with his salary. I swear, he's the greediest person I've ever known. It's truly unfortunate that he let his greed get the best of him. It's a shame that he risked everything in illegal gambling and ended up accumulating a massive debt. You won't imagine how enormous that amount of money is. It's not just a few thousand dollars. We're talking about a debt that could make your head spin. I can't believe he was so reckless with his finances. He dug himself into a deep hole, and now he has to face the consequences. I never thought James would be capable of such irresponsible behavior. He would never realize that this would not only affect his own life, but also put a strain on your family's financial stability. And what's more, I even heard from one of my friends working there that due to his seriously poor performance at the workplace, James has been kicked out of the company. Losing his job means he won't have a steady income anymore. He wasn't able to even afford the basic necessities, let alone his mortgage payments. I had to step in and rewrite the contract, putting it under my name to save him from further financial ruin. But unfortunately, I decided to sell the house. Sell the house? Flora, you can't be serious. That was our family home. How could you do something so heartless? We have nowhere to go now. Please, Flora, reconsider. We need a place to live. Heartless? Oh, the irony of that statement coming from you. You who have shown me nothing but indifference and disregard my entire life. You think I owe you something? Well, let me tell you, I owe you nothing. I am not responsible for your poor financial decisions or your lack of planning. You and James dug this hole for yourselves, and now you have to lie in it. Flora, I know we've had our differences, but we're family. We're supposed to support each other in times of need. Please, don't abandon us like this. I beg you to reconsider. We'll find a way to work things out together. Family? What a concept. It's funny how you suddenly remember we're family when you're in trouble. Where was this sense of togetherness when I needed it? When I was struggling with my own problems, you were nowhere to be found. You were too busy prioritizing James and his failures. I have spent years trying to prove my worth to you, but it was all in vain. Well, not anymore. I'm done being the scapegoat for your mistakes. I'm done being the responsible one while you and James squandered away your chances. Now it's your turn to face the consequences. Flora, I understand your anger and frustration, but please try to see things from my perspective. We can't change the past, but we can work towards a better future. If you have any compassion left for us, for me, please help us find a solution. I don't want to lose you and my family. Compassion? That's a word I never thought I'd hear from your mouth. You know what, mother? I do have compassion, but I reserve it for those who deserve it. 
And right now, you and James don't make the cut. You've pushed me away for too long, ignored my struggles, and dismissed my accomplishments. I have my own life now, my own dreams and aspirations. I won't let your mistakes drag me down. So find your own way out of this mess. Sell some of your precious possessions, seek help from friends, or find a job. It's time for you to face reality and take responsibility for your own actions. I never thought it would come to this. I always hoped we could reconcile and rebuild our relationship. But if this is truly your decision, then I have no choice but to accept it. Just remember, Flora, that family is irreplaceable. One day, you may realize the importance of forgiveness and compassion. I admit that I will be the one to leave this house. I know that I have caused a lot of difficulties for you, but I think that you will still leave me some place in your heart about your mother. But just remember my words, Flora. One day you will realize this important thing. Family is all, and you will come find me. I hope it's not too late when that day comes. We'll see about that, mother. Only time will tell. But for now, I bid you farewell. Goodbye. After that, I immediately blocked my mother's number and didn't reply to any of the messages her family sent me. My mother ended up being evicted from the house that she and James had moved into just weeks after they had moved in and had nowhere else to go. She then had to find a trivial job to make a living and pay the debt. James disappeared and never came back. It looked like he wasn't interested in taking care of our mother either, despite how much she had praised and favored him over me.